sitting only two or three shots. I'ma show you how to turn it up a notch. First, you get a swimming pool full of liquor. What's up guys, Peter here, and today we have a huge video about how archetypes actually ruined NBA 2K17. Now, whether you like the archetype system, if you dislike it, after watching this video, you're probably going to have second thoughts. Your opinion will really change, so yeah, let's get right into it. Make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel for more daily NBA 2K17 content, and let's get right into it. So, how did archetypes ruin 2K17? Now, I'm not saying that it's making the game... Uh, just like game breaking or unplayable but I know a lot of people that are bored of the game now and I think a big reason of that is actually the archetypes so first of all why did 2k make this archetype system one they want balance and they're overbalancing the game so much at this point to where it's very unrealistic two they want money um you have seven different archetypes that means seven different things and in 2k like for example 2k15 there's no play style so you could pretty much do everything this year to like have that and to do everything possible you have to make seven different players so that means seven times the money right so that's why 2k is doing this and uh basically there's a lot of different reasons why archetypes i think ruin the game and even if you like archetypes this isn't like all opinionated like these are facts turned into opinions right so you can have whatever opinion you want about it but these are just facts that i think make the game worse so first of all your player is very limited you can basically only do one thing very well where whether it like maybe 2k15 you could do everything very well because that's how the players work so for example sharpshooters all they can really do is shoot right like they can do everything else like mediocre and then they can just shoot right that's kind of goes with every other position right and that's how everything works in this game and i don't know it's just really not fun at that point to where your player is so limited and to do what even a 2k16 player could do you have to make a uh, playmaker uh, sharpshooter if you want to be able to shoot like him playmaker if you want to be able to dribble like him a uh, slasher if you want to be able to dunk like him and lockdown defender i know a lot of people say that the defense in this game is worse it's not the defense it's the archetypes because everybody's defense is like mediocre except for two people which is like lockdown defenders and paint protectors so to have that really good defense that you had last year because everybody can max out the defense last year you have to make a lockdown defender but then at top like at that point you can't really shoot threes your three is like a 60 something and you can't do a lot of other things so you're limited so much another thing is they're getting patched so much they're taking advantage of the fact uh that we have these archetypes that they're gonna just start patching individual ones so people make new players and this has to go with like the whole money thing but for example if you make like a player uh even last year it mainly like i'm gonna exclude patch three because patch three really did uh ruin like the inside we're well, not ruined but yeah it kind of uh made the inside center go extinct but say uh speed boosting is gone then like Basically, every point guard is affected. It's not just, say, playmakers or just sharpshooters. It's every point guard because uh, that's just how the game worked. Everybody had a point guard, right? But I don't know. This year, it's just like, oh, only slashers are affected. Only shot creators. Only, uh, like, playmakers. Only sharpshooters, right? When they come out with these patches, just so you make another player. And as soon as you make that player, they get patched. And it's just... The patches going along with this is just very bad combination. I really don't like it. Next, it limits who you can play with. For example, last year, you could play two outside point guards and an outside center. So you're having two of the same position and play style on the same team. And that was a very good lineup. But this year, uh, you're not going to want two playmakers. I mean, it's not ideal to run with two playmakers and like a glass cleaner, right? Because the playmakers can't shoot like outside point guards last year. Or you're not going to want to run with, I guess two like i don't know two lockdown defenders even because lockdown defenders basically have the defense that these i guess like everybody had last year because everybody can max out the defense but who wants to run two lockdown defenders and say glass cleaning or stretch big right it's just not the best lineup and you're just so limited at that point and like a lot of people that i ran with last year it's just hard to run with them this year because they made the same player as me and that's not the best thing to do and it uh, also makes your team limited, uh, especially in park. I mean, in pro you have five people, so everybody can do their own thing. But it just makes your park players, like, uh, limited. Also, the archetypes are very unrealistic. Like, how is... And they consider a 99 overall in this game the greatest of all time. There's only one 99 overall NBA player. That's Michael Jordan. Well, how are you going to be, a, say, a shot creator and be 99 overall, but you still can't even make a standing shot? All, like, your primary... 
uh, I guess, strength is just hitting fadeaways, but you're the greatest player of all time. Or like, say you're a lockdown defender and all you can really do is play defense. You can't shoot threes, you can barely shoot mids, everything else is just mediocre, but you're still the quote unquote greatest of all time or at that level, right? So it's just very unrealistic at that point. And I, I don't know, I just don't really like how archetypes are. I wish everybody could just make one player and they could just do everything with them. Like, you would be able to dunk like a slasher, shoot like a playmaker, uh, you know what I mean? Or I'm not, not shoot like a playmaker, shoot like a sharpshooter, dribble like a playmaker, etc. Play defense like a lockdown defender. Because then at that point, it's not, oh, the archetype advantage, because that's what makes people make more archetypes, or whatever archetype is better for the patch. It's just skill at that point. It's just straight up skill because everybody has like a very similar player, right? So, yeah, that's my opinion on archetypes. Uh, tell, me, tell me whether you like the uh, my player styles of 15, 16, or 17 the best. Which one you like? Uh, for me, I'm going to say, I mean, I didn't play much 15, but I would like 15 or 16 a lot better than this year because everybody can pretty much do everything and you're not so limited. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Again, make sure you guys smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.